welcome back to So This Is Thailand. And coming up now in expert advice, we have someone who his job is helping other people and here to help us on our show as well he is Mr. Don Knox, who is a counselor, psychotherapist, and also the founder of Bangkok Counseling Service. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, we've, we've covered a lot of things on, on expert advice. You know, we've looked at you know, business, we've looked at technology, we've looked at health. Mental health, though, is an area that I know that a lot of people seem to go undiagnosed or untreated, mm -hmm. something that is really needed as much as the physical health is needed. Uh, looking at your counseling service, what are the types of services or, or things that you treat or you, you cope with there? Um, we work mostly with um, expats uh, living in, in Bangkok, though we have recently started um, a service in Thai as well. Um, they're primarily adults, though we've also started a, a young people's service. Um, and the issues that we work with are often, I mean, it's a full range really for any issues that affect uh, people in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, relationship issues, issues around identity, uh, issues around sexuality, sexual health, um, uh, substance, alcohol and drug issues, um, anxiety, depression, people that have uh, maybe some difficulties or issues around assimilating mm -hmm. uh, into a new culture and mm. uh, way of life and the heat. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you were someone who was struggling with these kinds of issues and uh, undecided about whether you should seek help or not, um, how can counseling help you kind of get through it? Well, of course, if you're, dis if you're undecided about whether this is, whether counseling can help or not, mm -hmm. if you've never been bef to counseling or therapy before, you won't know. You'll only see, have some sense of maybe what you saw in the movies or, or you know, in the like. And so, um, of course, the process starts with an ass what we call assessment session, uh, which is really a, a, an information get meeting pl point where the client meets the therapist and asks the questions they need to ask and the therapist will you know, ask the client for what brings them and what are the issues they want to um, need some help with and from there we'll, d we'll set out a plan for helping them to, to resolve those issues and to work with them. Well I, I know wherever you are in the world one, one thing that always comes up and one that you actually mentioned is, is a specialty is looking at sexuality and sexual health and it's something that a lot of people are really reticent to, to talk about. Mm -hmm. you know, they either feel you know, they're embarrassed or, or they feel that you know, they're not accepted. Um, how can you help someone with, who's having issues in sexuality? Well, of course, the first thing is that what therapy provides is a safe and confidential space for a client to talk about any issue. And that being, that being one of them that I think clients are their life experience might be that they've never spoken about it before. And so to start talking about it when you might be unsure yourself about where you are with it, um, it can be very difficult. And so people are more likely maybe to keep it bottled inside and not talk about it. And so counseling can create the space where you start to talk about it. You start to think about you know, where, you, where you are, how you are with yourself, um, so that you can from there start to you know, talk to other people mm. about it. Right, and uh, you, the, through the process, um, what happens? At, what what kind of comes out at the end? Is there a resolution or some? Well, the objective in terms of therapy is that the the client would have a, a greater sense of self, that they would have a, better, a clearer picture of who they are in relation to the world around them. Um, mm. There isn't a predetermined sort of goal sure. from, from a th the therapist that the client needs to reach yeah. you know, a certain place, but we would work with what the client presents and where they want to get to. So maybe if they are unhappy with an, al an element of their life, mm -hmm. be it, be it uh, any element, but say for example with uh, their sexuality, the likelihood is that that impacts on their ability to form relationships or maintain mm -hmm. relationships. Um, they're more likely to withdraw from their friends and family because they don't want to or they want to avoid certain topics or, or certain conversations and so they withdraw and so their impacts negatively on their other relationships and so they could, you know, as a result become quite isolated. Right. Um, so if you have a member of the family or someone like a, a friend in the group that is kind of uh, struggling with these issues, maybe they're not talking to you about it directly or, or even if they are, what are some of the things that you can do to help them to kind of, you know, 
to be there to provide some kind of support. Yeah, it's sometimes that can be a difficult uh, issue for the sort of friends of, because of course, mm -hmm. if somebody has some issue around their sexuality or their identity, the, the likelihood is that the friends will collude with avo you know, avoiding talking about it. So mm -hmm. people will say, well, I didn't want to ask in case I upset you. Um, Whereas well, I think the most helpful thing can be to actually ask those questions. Uh, because what it does is it creates a, you can create an environment that tells your friend, you know, that, it's, uh, that you're there to offer support to them. And so creating, uh, choosing a time sensitively where, where you ask that question, where you create the opportunity for the, the friend to talk about, you know, their sexuality. Or, and that can be things like, um, for example, a, a, a client would, has reported that um, nobody has ever asked them whether they've been in a relationship. And so they've not uh, you know, had the opportunity to say you know, what their sexuality is because it's just avoided when they're around. People just don't ask those questions. And so that in itself can reinforce somebody's uh, sense of not being part of, the, of a group or not, people not being interested. Um, and of course, the other way around is people might say that they didn't want to, you know, create an embarrassing situation and mm. so forth. They can be difficult questions mm. sometimes. Well, they, they. well, when we're looking at sexuality, you know, a, a lot of it, you know, if for you know heterosexual or, or homosexual, you know, for heterosexuals, you don't come out and say, oh, you know, did you know I'm a heterosexual? Why do we seem to have a term for homosexuals when, in fact, it's a relationship like any other relationship? Uh, it's. I suppose there's something about one it being that for lesbian, gay, and bisexual people, there's a they're in a minority, and so not just the minority as in they're low in, lower in numbers, but of course historically the amount the prejudice that exists um, and homophobia, uh, you know, his across the world, um, and maybe Thailand that is less uh, less obvious. There isn't as much visibly that I have seen uh, living here, um, but the experiences, of course, of clients on an individual basis is that they may well feel excluded from uh, social groups, from their families, um, if they disclose, uh, um, you know, that, that part of their, their life. Of course, if in c the coming out um, process is, is not just uh, something that you will say to the world, but of course it's, it starts with yourself. And uh, therapy offers, you know, a, a space, a, a safe space to cr to start thinking and talking about it. And that coming out, you start doing it to acknowledging to one person. And it's about telling one other person that you know you are lesbian, gay, or bisexual. And then from there, to telling telling other people. And of course, then it allows you to have uh, important, significant relationships with, you know with people that are not secrets, that are not hidden, uh, that are open and so they can be healthy and productive. And well, well, looking, you, you know, you mentioned if, you know, if we're just comparing looking at Thailand versus, let's say, in the West, mm -hmm. it seems that there is much less anti antagonism here in, in Thai culture as well. And in, in fact, you know, you might see even very young children who are identifying themselves as, as homosexual uh, at a very young age. Um, do you, in, in your experience, the foreigners who come here, do they still bring with them that, that, that burden or that, that guilt they might be experiencing overseas here? Or, or do they feel that you know, it is a new culture and they still feel excluded or, or marginalized? I, th I think um, when we're talking about probably what becomes core beliefs in terms of uh, uh, development, um, that something like your awareness of, s of self and the, the, how that impacts on your identity is probably coming from a young age. So we're talking about your late teens, early adulthood. Um, and so their messages that that person will have had from well before they came here. And so just on arriving here, you don't throw off the shackles of your past. Um, you bring with you yourself. And so when you, even, even if you don't actually experience something from the community around you directly in that moment, your experience tells you that it's not, you, you, you're not safe or that you're not welcome. Or 
so on. Now, uh, we mentioned about kind of discrimination being a little less here or less obvious at least. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, abroad there are support groups that you can go to or a, a very large and established network like uh, PFLAG, something like that. Does that exist here as well um, for foreigners or even for Thai people? This, um I'm aware of a couple of organizations uh, that provide services f uh, for Thai people. I'm not aware of ones that are specifically for foreigners here. Right. Um, so that can be quite difficult if you're kind of struggling. It can be. And uh, I mean, but of course, with technology, um, you know, the, with the internet, um, there is services available in people's home countries, and it's mm -hmm. likely they'd be um, able to tap into those via the internet, via, um, uh, you know, using whether it's Skype or some other uh, um, form of uh, t t you know, telephone service, where they can call those, those services abroad. Sure. Um, where would be a good place to start looking for that kind of information or where to go to? To, fi uh, to f find, um, like if you're needing a little bit of help and you can't find it here, um, are there any recommended sites that you'd recommend uh, going to find? Um, um, well, I can probably only talk about in, say, in the, if you were from the UK and you wanted to access services in, in the UK, someplace like um, Switchboard um, is a, a sort of umbrella uh, directory service in, for lesbian and gay and bisexual services in the UK. And uh, where can we find more info about uh, Bangkok Counseling Service? Oh, you can find more info at www.bangkokcounselingservice.com. <laughs> Easy enough. Well, one, one last question. Uh, you mentioned in the, in the beginning talking about how, um, how trying to get advice from friends, you might be some collusion, might be some, some unintentional actually damage being done there if you know, trying to confide in a friend. Uh, what are some tips you can give, though, if you, know, you see a friend who is in need? I know a lot of people, they don't want to feel betrayed like, hey, guess what, I gave your number to my, my counselor who I know. I think he could help. I mean, do, would people react negatively to that? Or how would you go about saying, you know, I think you might actually like or benefit from talking to a counselor? Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody was to get, say to me, here's my friend's number, I think they could do with some counseling. You know, I would say to them, well, you need to speak to your friend because the friend, the last thing they want is a complete stranger calling them up saying somebody's talking about you. Um, so it's about sensitively maybe talking to the friend and saying, you know, this is a service I've heard of. It could be of help to you. Um, and it's really for people have to decide themselves. For therapy to work, to get something productive, positive out of it, you have to decide that you want to, to, to engage with it. It's not something that uh, you can be told to do. Um, and that's Thank you, Don, for joining us today. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Sure. Um, <laughs> I just well, yesterday, uh, last last night, I just noticed while looking for something on the on the internet and talking about coming out, the 11th of October is National Coming Out Day. So oh, there you go. <laughs> something good to celebrate. Then. <laughs> the month of October. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, do stay tuned on So This Is Thailand. Solabuli is the province of historical sites, the holy footprints, the beauty of nature, and famous food. From Bangkok, traveling to and around Solabuli could be made in one day. The main attraction is Plat Puttabad, which houses Thailand's most important Buddha footprint inside beautiful Mondok, decorated with thousands of glass pieces. During the Buddhist Lent Day, many people make merit by offering food to the monks. But have you ever heard of making merit by offering flowers? Do you want to know what it looks like? Because I do. Let's go find out together. The flower offering merit making or Thakbat Dokmai ceremony is a traditional Buddhist celebration in which locals make offerings to the Buddhist monks who parade through the streets, as well as the more usual offerings of food, incense, votive candles. Devotees also offer the distinctive yellow and pink Kalpansa flowers picked from the forest that only come into bloom during the Buddhist Lent. Hence, it's the origin of its name. That was some interesting merit making. And you know what? The only place where you can find that outstanding and unique Buddhist ceremony is in the province of Salabuli. The Thakbat Dokmai, floral offering merit making ritual, is unique to Salaburi province. 
This ritual draws devout Buddhists from all parts of Thailand as it stands out from the merit-making activities conducted in the other parts of Thailand. The residents of Amphur Plaputabad have been observing these traditions of making floral offerings since ancient times, and it has now become a significant provincial event. Wat Plat Kutabad in Salaburi offers a wonderful chance to commemorate the Buddhist Lent and earn merit. The hillside temple, home to a footprint of the Lord Buddha, is the major spot to observe the flower offering ceremony or Tak Bat Dok Mai. It is a spectacular time to witness the devotees lining the streets as hundreds of monks and novices file past, accepting the offerings en route to the shrine of the Holy Footprint. <laughs>